Hey y'all, welcome back, this is Annie. And today I thought I'd do another make my list video for one of my very favorite vendors, Southbound. They currently have a pre-order that opened a few days ago and it's still open for the rest of the weekend into Tuesday, October 3rd. I don't know exactly the time they'll close on Tuesday. They might even close early, but watch the Facebook group for any announcements along those lines. Usually I've seen them close at around seven o'clock in the evening on the day of closing, but just pay attention and maybe get your order in before Tuesday if you are planning on participating in this particular pre-order. So it opened on Tuesday, September 26th. It closes October 3rd on a Tuesday and there's a four to six week turnaround time. I'm not gonna read all of this. Y'all can read it, you can pause the video. Um, I've never had any customer service issues with this vendor and I anticipate that these are going to be shipping out sometime in that second or third week of November, somewhere in those. Um, that range definitely should be getting your order before Thanksgiving. Um, and a lot of the scents on this particular pre-order are either year-round scents or something that is kind of holiday focused, even though there are a few Halloween scents down here still. Um, there's so many reasons I am not going to go into uh, tons of detail why I love this vendor, but I just don't see a lot of people talking about Southbound and they are so underrated. I think that they have exceptional wax performance, at least in my house. They've got great shelf life. There's a variety of scents, something for pretty much everyone. And although there is going to be a little bit more bakery in the offerings, partially because there's so many people in the community that only melt bakery, but there's laundry scents, there's spicy scents, there's lavender, there's mint, there's woodsy, there's smoky scents. There's just so many different types of scents that they offer. And um, another thing about this vendor that I think a lot of people would appreciate is if you are not someone who likes to order from a pre-order, you don't have to order in this pre-order. She will have an RTS with extras after the pre-orders have all shipped out. They'll be loaded onto the site. Usually she makes some sort of an announcement and you can hop on and order RTS style if that is the way you prefer to order your wax. I will say sometimes really popular scents sell out. So if you don't like that, maybe order from the pre-order. Um, but I just wanna let y'all know that there are those options. She does not combine shipping between pre-order and RTS items. So if you see something on the site while you're going in to check out that is not a pre-order item, either wait till another time and just order RTS items, or you can combine the RTS in your checkout at one time with the pre-order. Just know that there's two separate shipping fees that are ARD that are added onto your cart. That is why your shipping will be higher than normal when you look at that because she's having to send out two different shipping packages. Also, because she doesn't combine orders, um, the pre-order and the RTS items, if you do order at them at the same time, will not be shipping together. And if you go in more than once into the pre-order, she says she doesn't combine, so you might have a second shipping fee and a separate box. I've never had that issue. I feel like her pruder lists are not so long that there's anything that I really would forget, and I just try to go in once. I love that she offers every single scent in three different shapes. The wax cakes, which are five to six ounces, those are going to be kind of like your typical souffle. However, there is more wax than a regular souffle. There is a decorative topper on top, so whether it looks like an um, ice cream scoop or a rosebud. She has everything themed for the scents and different colors. They're super, super cute. I'll try to post like a picture right here of an example of a wax cake. So there's more wax in a regular souffle and the price for these is $8.45. She also has shape bags. Sometimes I slip up and call these bakery bags because they're in those bakery bags um, with the windows on the front. These are gonna be an assortment of shapes. She also has these themed. Sometimes there's multiple colors or even like multiple colors in the same shape. 
there's so much attention to detail. If you're ordering a Christmas scent, you're probably going to find Christmas themed different shapes in that bag. If you're ordering a Halloween scent, you might find pumpkins and skulls and tombstones. You get the idea. I love the shape bags. It's probably my favorite size to order from her because it gives me enough wax to have three or four different times I melt the scent depending on like what room it is. Um, especially if it's like a bedroom, I would probably get a lot more melts than that out of the bag. But I'm just taking into account, you know, a bigger living area for using this sample. So the shape bags are eight to eight and a half ounces. They're $12 a piece. And the next size up, the last largest size is loaves. This is going to be your standard loaf size, but there is an embed on top. These are 15 to 16 ounces. A lot of times there is multiple colors in the loaf. They are quite beautiful, just like the wax cakes. Um, if there is glitter, everything does not have glitter on it, but sometimes there is glitter and it's done very tastefully. It's not excessive. I never feel like it's a pain to clean out of my warmers. Um, it's paired well with the idea behind the scent, the name and the colors. She puts so much attention to detail in her wax. And um, once you've ordered from her, you that's one of the things you can't help but notice. So... The shipping is a flat rate, no matter how big or small your order is, it's $9, as long as you don't add any of those RTS items in. And um, I love that because if I place a really big order, um, $9 is a really great deal in the shipping. There is the website, southboundcandleco.com, and she also has an Instagram page where you can get a lot of this information if you're not on Facebook. So I'm going to do what I normally do when I make a list and I'm going to copy and paste this into a blank document. I'm going to use Sansom Notes on my phone. You can use whatever works for you. And if you have any tips for how you make lists for pre-orders or RTSs, um, share them down below. I think that'd be helpful not only to me, but to other people who might be watching this video later on. I know that I learned a lot of ways to help me make my decision process easier from the advice of many other people in this community. So let me know what helps you make your list. And also let me know if you like these kind of videos. I don't know if everyone they're for everyone necessarily, but I'm hoping that they're helpful, especially with a vendor that maybe not as many people out there in the community have tried. And I have a lot of these scents or have melted them in the past. So hopefully this can kind of give you an idea on how they might smell to you. I'm not going to go much into performance because any of the ones that I have had on this list have all performed well for me. I rarely have any kind of performance issues with Southbound, frankly. And performance is such a subjective thing that... Um, I, I can't, you know, tell you how it's going to perform in your house, but hopefully I can give you an idea of generally what the scent it might smell like, you know, from someone who's smelled it before. And also, please, before we go too far on this, remember that just because I'm not a particularly big fan of a scent or because I'm not putting it on my list to pick up this time doesn't mean that it's not a great scent or that you might not like it. My preferences might be different than you or than other people out in the community who do love this scent. And any sense that I'm choosing not to add on my list this time, I either still have enough of currently or they just weren't favorites or up like my alley on scent preferences. And I still think that there are plenty of people out there who will love the scent, whether I get it or not. So please make your decisions based off of what you knew, know to love and enjoy. And without further ado, let me copy and paste this. And I'm going to kind of cut out all the extraneous fluff, get it nice and organized on my document so it's visually easy to follow and dive into the scents from there. All right, be right back. Okay, so... This is kind of how I make my list, especially if they are not an enormous list. 
it just works a little bit easier for me. I have the different sizes and the prices, and then I have spaced out the scents and bolded and underlined the names of the scents. That's just for me personally. You do not have to do any of this. You can make your list however you want. All right, first up on the scents is Lavender Cream Puffs. I know a lot of people are requesting this in the group. <clears throat> Summer. Um, and I have had this scent before. The scent notes are lavender, buttery pastry dough, creamy vanilla custard, sweet cream, and confectioner sugar. And Cream Puffs is one of the house blends from Southbound. If you ever have the chance, pick up the Cream Puffs blends if it's combined with something else that sounds good to you. She has a wide variety of Cream Puff blends. I really like this particular bakery blend from her. It's very creamy, that custardy, and the kind of like flaky, buttery pastry dough. That's what I get mostly from the Cream Puff blends and then whatever it's combined with. I personally am a huge fan of the Cream Puffs with the coffee, the cafe Cream Puffs, and some, several others. Lavender Cream Puffs, however, isn't one that I particularly love that much. And that's because the lavender in this is not a lavender oil that I'm a huge fan of. That being said, it is a lavender oil that a lot of people really love in the community. A lot of people refer to it as a sweet lavender. For example, I tried to go quickly through and grab up some lavenders that were kind of similar smelling to the lavender. Not the herbal lavender, but this particular lavender that Southbound uses in a lot of her blends. And try to kind of pinpoint something that it was very, very similar to for reference. And to me, it smells quite similar to the lavender sugar milk from Ava's or from Traverse City, if you have smelled that. It gives me a kind of creamy lavender with a strong body care lean that can come across a bit soapy or powdery depending on what it's blended with. Now, a lot of people call this sweet lavender and so um, maybe it smells a lot sweeter to other people. It's kind of hard to say it doesn't smell sweet when it's blended with a bakery blend like this, but I just don't find it to be as sweet as like a lavender marshmallow, for example. That being said, that lavender a lot of people love in this community. And if this is a lavender you love and you like it, lavenders mixed with bakery, this is probably one you will enjoy. And I know there's a lot of hype about this scent, so, um, I personally am not putting this on my list just because I've had it before and I don't need any more right now. Um, so I'm going to cut and paste this. Um, okay. I don't know why it's not letting me do my... Okay. Well, it's not letting me cut like normal. So I'm putting it down below at the bottom because it's not one I'm planning on picking up. But again, like I said, if it sounds good to you, go for it. I find that I prefer, well, there, there's the cutting, okay. Um, I prefer her herbal lavender blends and she also has some lavender marshmallow blends. Those are the ones that my nose just enjoys a little bit more. Next up is icing on the cake. The scent notes are sugar cookie dough, vanilla bean noel, marshmallow cream cookies, and vanilla wafers. I actually melted this recently because I still have some, and this is a really, really nice vanilla-based bakery blend. My house struggles with having those types of blends perform, and I found this to be um, really a good throw. I would say it was seven and a half eight for quite a while and to me I got a lot of the vanilla wafers in this blend I'm not a huge fan of vanilla wafers in wax I don't mind it um, it could be that it just just kind of jumps out of the blend a little bit more to me than a lot of the other notes but I still do get some of the vanilla bean noel and the sugar cookie dough and it's one that I would repurchase. Right now I still have plenty and it's a popular blend with good reason. So I don't need any right now. But if you like Vanilla Bakery, this is a good performing Vanilla Bakery. And it smells really delicious too. 
Next up is sugar cookie latte, and this is freshly baked sugar cookies with sweet vanilla, roasted coffee beans, and sweet cream. This is one I'm so excited to see on the list. I love this scent so much. Southbound has a lot of great coffee blends, in my opinion. They're one of the best places to go get a good coffee blend if you're looking for a vendor that has a lot of variety. One thing I like about this blend is that the coffee is not bitter. It's not that dark roast. It's more of a medium roast. It's got a very nice warmth and roundness to that coffee smell. And it's very sweet and creamy, just like a cup of coffee that you've put your sweet creamer into. And I don't get a ton of the sugar cookie in here either. I think if you are worried about the bakery note in here, I would not worry. I think it just makes it sweet and creamy smelling, honestly. So this one I am almost out of actually, and it's one of my favorite coffee blends from anywhere. It is very, very popular blend, so it comes back frequently, but I'm just gonna pop that down under loaves. It might get move to shape bags, we'll see. But um, it is a favorite and I like melting coffee blends, especially in the fall and the winter and on the weekends. So I wouldn't mind picking up some more of that. Next up is strawberry pound cake lavender frosting. And this is creamy pound cake topped with strawberries and fresh cream, lavender, vanilla, and buttercream frosting. And this is that same lavender that's in the lavender cream puffs. And it's combined with Southbound Strawberry Pound Cake, which I think Southbound has one of the best strawberry pound cakes out there. I love their strawberry pound cake blends. Currently, I have almost a whole bag of this, so I do not need any more, especially since it's not really a favorite of mine with that lavender. Initially, when I got it, the lavender was just smacking me in the face. It was really strong, and I wasn't getting a lot of the strawberry pound cake. But as it sat... Um, I don't know, it's probably been a year and a half since I ordered it, but the strawberry pound cake and the lavender really did kind of balance themselves out as they sat and cured for a while. And so when you melt it, the lavender is not overwhelming and you do get a lot of that really nice vanilla pound cake in here with the note of strawberry. It's a pretty good blend. Um, the only downside of it to me is just that the that lavender is one I just don't like that much of, but that being said, I'm still planning on finishing melting the bag that I have of it because I can enjoy it enough with the strawberry pound cake. That one's going down to the bottom though because I don't need any more, I have plenty. Editing Annie interrupts this video with an important warning about recording Annie. Recording Annie is completely full of it without stopping to consider the repercussions and the consequences of having to eat her words, she popped this blend in on a pure whim as a nighttime blend. Lo and behold, while the lavender still is not her favorite lavender, and she could see a little bit more strawberry being quite nice in this blend, the beauteousness of that golden vanilla pound cake with the creamy lavender somehow captured her spirit she couldn't resist the spell this scent had cast on her so despite fears of public outcry she put the scent back on her pre-order list but yeah all jokes aside y'all i did melt this last night and i was really taken aback how nicely balanced the blend was melting I got so much of that pound cake and it was so good. I still don't love this lavender a ton, but somehow in this blend, it just really, really did work. There was such a creaminess and especially knowing in my house, it benefited from more than just like two or three months cure. I definitely don't think it needs the year and a half that what I just had, um, I want to go ahead and get some so that, you know, five or six months from now, it is really good and nicely balanced so that the lavender is not overpowering for me. So yeah, this kind of got booted back on the list. Resuming video. 
Next up is pumpkin cheesecake eggnog. This is spicy pumpkin, sweet cheesecake, and creamy eggnog. And I've mentioned before, I'm really picky with eggnog scents. I've tried a ton of different eggnog scents, and I don't have many that I liked. I have never tried this particular blend before, but that combined with the spicy pumpkin, I am not so sure that this is a blend that speaks to me because I don't like pumpkin that much, especially spicy pumpkin, and I also don't like eggnog. I'm very picky. So for that reason, I'm not planning on picking this one up. That being said, I know that there are people who were asking for this in the group who really love this blend. I highly suspect it's a really good combination of those scents um, based off of the people who were talking about it in the group. Next up is pumpkin cake batter, and this is pumpkin, ginger, allspice, cinnamon, brown sugar, nutmeg, molasses, yellow cake batter, and vanilla frosting. I've never tried this one before. Again, there was a lot of people who love this in the group, and I'm tempted to try it. I don't like a lot of pumpkin, but I do like having a little bit periodically to melt and I have melted through a lot of the pumpkin that I do have over the last several years and not really been adding too much to it so I think I'm gonna for now put it under shape bags but we'll see that one I'm on the fence with um, that yellow cake butter and the frosting note just really intrigues me and I'm kind of wondering if it's similar to pumpkin crunch cake which is actually a pumpkin scent that I truly enjoy so for now it's going there next up is autumn sheets this is light cotton amber sandalwood bergamot mahogany and clove this is a great example of some really unusual scents that southbound has i don't think i've seen anything even close to this from another vendor and i'm really intrigued by it with the exception of the cotton i cannot melt like sea island sun-dried cotton type scents it's like a headache just waiting just smelling it in the bag so i am not going to pick this up um, because i don't know if the cotton is one of those cottons or not and i don't want to take the chance if you know about this one though please let me know down below i am curious if it's more of like a linen oil versus a cotton because everything else sounds really interesting in this to me. I imagine it's gonna be like a warm laundry, just based off of the notes, maybe a little bit masculine leaning with the amber and the bergamot and the mahogany, like all of this pretty much does sound like a masculine kind of warm, slightly spicy laundry. It really does sound good. Maybe I'm talking myself into it. I shouldn't be, okay. Moving on, oatmeal chai cream puffs. So this is another one of the cream puff blends. It's oatmeal cookies, chai, buttery pastry dough, creamy vanilla custard, sweet cream, and confectioner sugar. I don't need any more of this currently. Um, it is a nice cream puff blend. I do feel like it's one for me that I can only melt during the fall just because that chai is a little bit almost too spicy for me. I love the oatmeal cookie type oil, and that's one that I feel like I can get away melting other times of the year. But this particular one, sorry, I won't take it off the screen yet. Um, this particular one is extra spicy to me. I don't know that other people will be as sensitive to it, but I feel like there's a decent amount of clove or allspice in here, and that really just jumps out to me with the rest of the blend. I have a small allergy to clove, so I feel like I'm a little more sensitive to that in blends sometimes. But right now I don't need any more of it. I feel like this is a really good one for those of you who like some spiced bakery, but it doesn't have pumpkin inserted in it and it doesn't have apple inserted in it. Um, if you like kind of those false spices, but you don't, you kind of want something that breaks up the pumpkin spice during the fall, this could be a good blend for adding that variety in the mix. All right, next up is Ghoul Gang, and it's raspberry, strawberry, blackberry, citrus, smooth whipped cream, sweet musk, and sugar crystals. I've never tried this one before. It sounds like a mixed berry with like a little bit of a body care 
leaning vibe to it from the musk possibly again i haven't tried it so i'm not really sure but i know that this is one i've seen come back quite a few times in the last several years so it must be a popular scent i I don't know. I've got a lot of fruity stuff in my collection right now, so I don't feel like I need this one, but I wouldn't be opposed to trying it someday down the road. Um, and I know it seems like I'm not putting a lot on my list, but like I said, I have a lot of these or I've tried them um, and not everything, you know, needs to go on the list. All right, next up is candy corn cupcakes. It's buttery vanilla candy corn and yellow cake topped with vanilla frosting. I hear people talk about candy corn in blends, and I honestly don't know if I've ever had a blend that was like a candy corn blend without so much other else in there covering it up. So this one really intrigues me. Um, I'm, again, I've never tried it, but... Yeah, I'm I'm curious. So for that sake, I mean, it's probably more of a Halloween blend, even though probably something you could get away with melting any time of the year because a yellow cake and vanilla frosting. This sounds like a vanilla bakery that might be extra buttery and sweet. Um, and yeah, I'm curious. I want to try that. So I'll put that up under the shape bags. Next up, I'm going to talk about frozen custard next and then talk about baking spirits bright and Christmas tree cookies um, together. So frozen custard, I'm just going to pop it up here under the loaf section because I love this blend so much. The scent notes are creamy vanilla custard with hints of fresh mint. This is a great scent for those of you who like mint blends, but don't want something that is nose clearing or eye burning, smack you in the face mint. The mint when it's melted really does kind of tone down. It smells like a vanilla ice cream that is flavored with some mint. Not peppermint, not a garden green mint, but just like a, a creamy mint. Um, I had my husband smell this bag and he's like, reminds me of like a Briar's mint ice cream not the chocolatey mint but just mint ice cream and i personally think this smells a lot better than briars but it's that kind of idea it's not overwhelming with the mint you do get a lot of that vanilla creamy custard in your note and i find this to be a decent performer even though it's not a punch in the face mint i'm actually melted this um yesterday or um, no, last night is when I popped it in and it went through the whole night in the bedroom and it went for quite a while. I, could, I didn't need to take it out, but I let it go for, you know, probably about 20 hours. I find this scent to be very appealing. I feel like I could get away with melting this even if guests were around. I don't think this is necessarily just a winter scent either. I could melt this year round. I see this being possibly really pleasant in the summer um, just to kind of give this feeling of a cool sweetness in the air. I really love this blend and I don't have a ton left so that's why it's going under the loaf section. All right let's talk about baking spirits bright and Christmas tree cookies because if you look at the scent notes you may be thinking they have a lot of similarities and you would be right. Um, for Baking Spirits Bright, the scent notes are fur needle, orange peel, warm spices, fresh baked cookies, pine sap, powdered sugar, and rich buttercream. And then Christmas Tree Cookies is pine, fresh lime, cardamom, pepper, and delicious frosted sugar cookies. So first of all, off the bat, out of these two, if you are looking for a more bakery forward blend when it's melting, Christmas Tree Cookies is the way to go. That one has more of a bakery note. If you are looking for a scent that's going to be super, super strong, a powerhouse in your house, Baking Spirits Bright is the one to go with. They're both great performers, but Baking Spirits Bright is extremely strong. You do not need it in every warm in your house. Baking Spirits Bright is far more of an evergreen tree scent than it is a bakery scent to me. Even though it has more bakery notes listed, the pine and the fir are quite strong in here. 
I personally do not get any orange peel. I even had my husband spell these two to see if I was just, you know, picking up on these scents weirdly. And he didn't pick up on any orange either. Um, I also feel like in the Baking Spirits Bright, I get a decent amount of the spices. Even though they're not listed out in the blend, I get a lot of the cardamom, some allspice. Um, it's really a nice blend. I like this blend a lot. And if you want just kind of a general reaction to the two blends, my husband liked this one better, smelling them side by side. And when I asked him if he could tell me what they smelled like instead of talking about any of the scent notes, he told me it smelled like hot holidays to him. So um, I would agree it feels quite a lot like the holidays. I think you could melt it in the winter time as well or the fall but I don't see it being either of these being really a year-round scent. Um, I feel like in Baking Spirits Bright like I said I get a lot of the evergreen tree. I get a lot of the spices that kind of warm peppery gingery note like cardamom smells in here very strongly to me and then I get the buttercream I don't really get much of the cookies or the powdered sugar because I mean golly who's ever stuck their head in a bag of powdered sugar I, there's not really a scent of powdered sugar um it's a sweet like ness in the air that you can taste but um other than that I don't really feel like there's a smell to powdered sugar anyways I feel like I get a little bit of the buttercream, but mainly the tree note in here. And I really like this one. The Christmas tree cookie one, the lime is really interesting in there. I wouldn't let that scare you away. It almost has like a freshness to this. So it doesn't feel like nearly as heavy a blend. And on cold, I get more of the spices, but once it's warmed, it mellows out. The pine isn't overwhelming the spices aren't overwhelming the lime isn't overwhelming um, it's more of a mellow holiday bakery scent with these other notes in there to me if you've never smelled cardamom in a blend um, cardamom kind of smells like nutmeg ginger and pepper kind of combined it can be very um, punchy and peppery and I really personally like it in holiday blends. I think it smells really good. And there's not a lot of blends out there that have cardamom in there. So hopefully that helps if you're kind of trying to decide between the two. I still have some of both. But I have almost completely melted through my Baking Spirit Sprite. And so I'm going to put that up here in the loaf section because I do really like that. And I feel like I could get a loaf and it would last me for a few years. I have all confidence that four years from now, I could pull this loaf out and melt some from it and it'd still be just as strong. Christmas tree cookies, I don't think I need more of because I have almost an entire bag still right now. And of the two, I liked Baking Spirits Bright a little bit more. Um, it's um, a scent that I feel like I don't have anything else in my collection like Baking Spirits Bright. Whereas I do have some things in my collection that are tree and cookie scents. They're, I don't have anything that's exactly like Christmas tree cookies but just some others that are sort of similar. That's why I feel like I don't need more for this year, but I think it would be one I would repurchase again some other time. Next up is Grinch Cake, and that's gingerbread cake pops and frosted sugar cookies. I still have some of this. I don't need any more right now, especially since I don't melt a lot of spice scents. I'm not anti-spice scents, but I just don't tend to reach for them that often. I do feel like Southbound has a great gingerbread though. It's not as bitter um, a gingerbread. It's also not a super ginger forward one. It has more of the spice focus to my nose. And the frosted sugar cookies and the cake pop part in this kind of pull that gingerbread back a little bit on the spiciness and make it more of a rounded bakery scent in my opinion. I know that a lot of people who love this blend, so um, right now I just don't need any more and it has been a while since I've melted some so I need to melt 
what I have this Christmas and kind of make sure I'm still remembering that scent accurately. <clears throat> We're down to the end. Barbie's Beach House. This is strawberry, raspberry, guava, cantaloupe, melon, and salty sea air. And I have not tried this blend. I've seen it offered quite a few times, which leads me to think it's a popular blend. I love melon scents. I love salty sea air. And I like that kind of raspberry, guava, strawberry kind of scent profile. I've never seen this particular combination anywhere else, but I think it sounds really good. Even though it is a summertime scent, I am thinking about going ahead and just getting a shape bag for next summer. And that way it will be like crazy strong and ready to go um, whenever I feel like it. It just sounds really nice and fruity and fresh and I'm a sucker for cantaloupe melon stuff. So we're down to the last one and this is orange cranberry scones. The scent notes are tart cranberry, orange peel and warm vanilla scones. This is one of my favorite scents from Southbound. I have loved this scent for several years. And I just want to say, please do not be scared away by the orange in this. It is not a dominant orange scent. It's more like orange zest has been mixed into the batter of these scones or is kind of sprinkled in with a little bit of the icing that's drizzled on top. Same with the cranberry. You get little pops of the cranberry, but it's not a punch in the face cranberry scent. This is very bakery forward and it's not listed in the notes, but it smells like these warm, fresh out of the oven scones that have had a touch of almond extract mixed into the dough. So this light hint of almond and the warm kind of biscuity, soft, fluffy scone with a hint of orange zest and a hint of cranberry. It is a really, really delicious bakery scent. And I see it offered almost every year in preparation for the holidays, probably because of the orange cranberry, but I find this to be a great scent year round. Um, so I'll probably pick up some of this, even though I still have someone, some of this just because I love to melt it. It's a very warm, pleasant bakery if you're looking for a bakery to melt around the holidays that can still sort of feel holiday-ish, but be very different from a lot of the typical holiday bakery out there. Um, so if that sounds good to you, I would encourage you to pick up some. I know it's a popular one. I'm not the only one that loves this. And um, that brings us to the end of our list. Are you planning on ordering from this pre-order? Remember, it closes Tuesday, the October 3rd. So probably she usually closes it early in the evening whenever she closes it. Um, I'm not sure the exact time, but if I had to guess, probably 7 central in the evening. Um, but I would just pay attention to the Facebook group or um, message Rachel if you have questions, because I could be wrong about that. Remember to make your list and only go in once because she doesn't combine orders. And if you are ordering, what are you excited about on this list? Or have you melted some of these scents before? Do you have any thoughts on them? Especially the ones I haven't melted. I'm very curious. This might not be my finalized list. I'm trying to decide, but there are definitely some favorites that were offered. And if you've never ordered from this vendor before, I hope you'd be willing to give them a chance because I feel like they're so underrated and they deserve a lot more love and attention than they tend to get because their wax is exceptional. It is, like I've said many times, one of my favorites. And I love not having to worry about, is my bakery going to lose scent a year after I purchase it? I know that the bakery from Southbound can sit in my collection for three years and I can pull it out and I've not had an issue with it at all. So that is just one of the many reasons why I love this vendor. 
let me know if you like these kind of videos, if you feel like they're helpful kind of going over some of the scents, and if there are any other vendors you'd like to see me do a video like this from, please comment and let me know down below. I look forward to hearing about everybody's orders from Southbound, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their weekend. Thanks for watching.